Welcome back. It was already nearly dusk by the time we got home. The dim light of the setting sun afforded the complex a quiet sense of foreboding. Daigo kun hopped out of the car and heaved a sigh. After what we saw today, I'm scared to go home. Was he referring to Koyama's corpse or Uchiyama-san's doppelganger? Yes. Neither option was particularly pleasant. Looking up at the apartment building, I sighed too. Then I fished Koyama's secret key out of my pocket and compared it to my own house key. Is it really one of ours? There was no guarantee it was actually a key to 202. Part of me hoped it was, but another part of me sincerely hoped it wasn't. Since we'd gone to all that trouble to obtain it, I hoped it would be the key, literally, to learning the truth. But at the same time, I was terrified of finding out. Want to test it? Before I knew it, Daigo-kun was standing next to me, peering over my shoulder at the key in my hand. But we promised Uchiyama-san we wouldn't. We're just testing it. We're not actually going in. He wore his usual easy-going expression. But... It's almost night time. Does it matter? We're just testing to make sure the key works. The memory of that ghostly pale hand flashed through the back of my mind. <laughs> It'll be fine. Probably. Probably? Gee, how encouraging. Okay then, I'll go by myself. Does that work for you? Absolutely not! As I lost my temper, Daigo-kun suddenly glanced across the parking lot. The landlady's watching. The next moment, I heard the sound of a window sliding shut from the direction of the landlady's house. Was she keeping tabs on us? I mean, probably. No, I was just overthinking it. Or so I hoped, anyway. Let's go. I'll do the unlocking. Daigo-kun plucked the key from my palm. Deja vu. He promptly headed into the building, and I hastily followed after him. You promise you're not really going in there? Of course I'm not. Not after today. Not after what we'd seen. He didn't say it, but I knew that was what he meant. He strode past my apartment and stopped in front of the door to 202. The crimson light of the sunset streamed into the hall just as it had when we investigated 203. Over his shoulder, the sky was painted a vivid scarlet. Okay, here goes. Aren't you scared at all? I felt like I'd asked that question a hundred times by now. Because you have. And I knew he'd probably say the same thing, but I had to ask. I had to. Daigo-kun put the tip of the key against the keyhole, then stopped and looked at me for a long moment. Thanks for making it weird. Kaya-san, why did you come with me? What? It was an entirely unexpected question, and I found myself at a loss for words. Instead, I simply stared down at the key in his hand. If you're scared, you could always just walk away, right? He had a point. 
I could run away at any time. He would probably let me take his house key even. But you're here because you want to know the truth. Am I wrong? All I could do was shake my head. No, he was completely right. If we want to make sense of this insanity, if we want to solve it, then we have to take action. I watched as the key slid into the lock with a loud click. But for some reason, Daigo-kun couldn't seem to turn it. What the? It's not turning. In response to my question, he jiggled the key over and over. The lock rattled, but refused to budge. Instantly, I heaved a sigh of relief and felt the tension drain from my body. It's not a 202 key after all. Apparently not. Good grief. Looking conflicted, Daigo-kun pulled the key from the lock and began to toss it into the air, catching it in his palm. Might work on the apartment next door, though. Don't be ridiculous. Well, it sure looks like one of our keys, doesn't it? His tone had lightened considerably, and I felt a small smile creep up on my lips. Let's just give it a try, shall we? Jokingly, he walked over to 203. Will you cut it out? It's not going to work. Sure enough, the lock rattled in place and Daigo-kun slumped his shoulders. No dice. Next, he turned back and walked past me to 201. Wouldn't it be wild if it opens your door? I'm telling you, it's not going to. Chuckling, he inserted the key. Uh-oh. And then the key turned and the lock clicked open. How? I dashed over to the door to double check. Daigo-kun turned the key back and forth, locking and unlocking the door. Had I given him the wrong key by mistake? I dug in my pocket and pulled out my key ring with my house key still attached. Well, that's intriguing. The key was for 201. Why? But Daigo-kun didn't respond. Instead, he pulled the key out of the lock, slipped it into his pocket and walked into my apartment. Daigo-kun! I called out to him, but he didn't stop. He kicked his shoes off at the door, then headed into the main room, and I chased after him. Meanwhile, he headed straight for the balcony. Once outside, he crouched down beside the partition wall where I'd previously witnessed that ghastly hand. Hey, Daigo-kun, what is it? Oh, uh, just wanted to check something, that's all. Turns out I was right. Out on the balcony, the twilight was fading into dusk. I moved behind Daigo-kun and watched his hands move. He pressed ever so lightly against the lower half of the wall. And it swung open like a door. Oh, the plot thickens. Is that a hidden passage? My fear forgotten, I peered through the opening into 202's balcony. Wait, okay, let me, let me theorize. So, the guy, Koyama, had both apartments maybe? And like, the roommate wasn't actually like, in the same room. 
but they were just sharing like 201 and 202 and they had this like hidden door so he could like go into one room and then enter the other one secretly. I have no idea. Let's just keep reading. I hadn't noticed the hinges on the bottom half of the partition until just now. Oh. <laughs> out of nowhere, something struck the window and I let out a shriek. Daigo-kun immediately peered through the opening with me, and froze. Oh my goodness gracious me! A woman was pressed up against the glass. That's no thanks. I couldn't make out most of her face, but I could see her mouth, twisted in a furious snarl. Her hair was a tussled mess, and she slammed both hands against the pane like she was trying to break it. Oh my. Together, we scrambled out of 201 and into the hall. As he moved to close the door, he looked over at 202 and sucked in a breath. He began to shake, and I quickly followed his gaze. <gasps> Is the door open? Oh my goodness! From the door to 202 was open, and long strands of hair were flowing out from inside. <laughs> no thank you, time to burn the whole building down. I couldn't see the woman herself, just strands of wavy hair, fluttering peacefully in the wind. I don't think it's peacefully. That was all it took to strike terror into my heart. Daigo-kun Daigo -kun flinched as I called his name. Then he grabbed my hand, and together we dashed up the stairs to the third floor without even locking my door. Hmm, I don't know about you, but if I see, if I'm next to, or even in an apartment that is very clearly haunted, there's a woman banging on the window, there's hair coming out of the front door, I am not for the life of me staying in the same building, I am getting the hell out of there into the next prefecture. No thank you. Behind us, we heard the sound of a door closing. What was that? What in God's name was that? But I didn't dare speak until we were safely inside 301, door locked and chained. Chapter 28 Someone was pounding on the door. I could hear them rattling the doorknob too. I could hear them screaming something, but couldn't make out what. Their voice was muffled, as though they were underwater. Drawn by the sound, my front door approached me. What? <laughs> Hello? How? <laughs> or maybe I was approaching it. The loud click of the lock seemed to reverberate throughout my hazy world. No, don't open it. For some reason, my heart was gripped by a dark sense of foreboding. Run. Run. But the door slowly opened. My field of vision shrank. Or maybe I had backed away a few steps. Then the door opened fully. A woman was standing there. She appeared to be in her fifties. I thought I recognised her from somewhere, but couldn't quite place it. Fury in her eyes, she stormed inside. My vision shrank again, though whether from backing away or being pushed away, I wasn't certain. Then the woman slammed my chest. She looked all around the apartment wailing about something, but I couldn't make out what. She went around opening every door like she was searching for something. Unable to find it, she rounded on me, seizing me by the shoulders. I felt myself being shaken. Then she flung me hard to the floor, and I landed on my rear. Next, she stormed over to the sliding glass door, whipped it open and stormed out onto the balcony. Desperately, I crawled after her. I could see her peering over at the apartment next door. Then, screaming, 
she kicked open the partition between the two balconies. Stay away from there. I tried to get the words out, but couldn't. The woman crawled onto the neighbouring balcony, then stormed into the other apartment. Uh Uh-oh. Inside were two younger women. One was Japanese, and the other a different Asian ethnicity. The Japanese woman seemed familiar, but I couldn't quite remember her either. Oh no. Startled, the Japanese woman tried to stop the angry intruder, but the older woman shoved her away, then seized the Asian woman by the collar and began to strangle her. The Asian woman shook off her demonic attacker and dashed for the front door. But the older woman grabbed her by the arm and dragged her into the bathroom. I don't like where this is going. The younger woman backed away to the corner of the room, and the older woman struck her in the face. The Asian woman was frozen in fear as the older woman wrapped her hands around her throat and began to choke her once more. Instantly, a pool of red formed at the corner of my vision. The floor. There was a puddle of blood on the floor. The woman's face was twisted in agony. No. You're going to... Kai-san? Kai-san! Suddenly, I felt myself being hauled up from the darkness. Kai-san, what did you Good grief! Kai-san, what's gotten into you? Dimly, my mind came into focus. I opened my eyes to see Daigo-kun looking back at me. Of course it's me. Were you having a bad dream or something? Something like that, I guess. I sat up, and Daigo-kun crouched down next to the bed, looking concerned. Okay, so if the two of them actually were living in the same apartment in 202, the, was it the student and the, the hostess, then... I have no idea who was in 201 and why there is a secret door partition there. Let's find out. You were shouting an awful lot. For a second, I was worried that thing crawled all the way here. Oh, sorry, it was probably just a really crazy dream. Daigo-kun sighed exasperatedly. I think that's putting it lightly, but okay. How could I even begin to explain what I'd seen? A dream in which some middle-aged lady barges into an apartment where two young women live. It was a pretty dramatic encounter, but I was clueless as to the surrounding circumstances. So what happened in the dream? He propped his chin in his hands on the side of the bed, and I glanced at the clock on my nightstand. I'd woken up a bit earlier than intended, but going back to sleep was the last thing on my mind. So I dragged my sluggish body out of bed. Same. Then I realised the button-down I was wearing as a makeshift nightgown was drenched in sweat. I reached down and lightly touched his shoulder as he knelt on the floor. I'm not sure. There was this vicious, almost demonic older woman. She crossed over a balcony and barged into an apartment where these two other girls were living and started attacking them. The hell kind of dream is that? You said it. Like I said, it was a really crazy dream. The older lady looked to be in her fifties, 
and she kept screaming and screaming. She kicked down the balcony partition and stormed over next door. Then, she shoved one of the women away and started strangling the Asian girl. Sometimes things don't click until you say them out loud. This woman has to be the slowest woman on earth. 201 and 202? Maybe. It felt too real to be just a dream. But at the same time, assuming it was real felt too easy somehow. Still, my dream was starting to fill in the gaps between all the bits and pieces. As I contemplated this, Daigo-kun stood up and opened the bedroom curtains. Beyond the window, the sun was barely peeking up from beneath the horizon. Well, it's a little early, but let's start getting ready. I'm sure Uchiyama-san will show up sooner or later. Right, good point. We met Uchiyama-san down on the ground floor. For whatever reason, he seemed strangely restless. Was it just my imagination or did he look a little pale? Perhaps he was just nervous about exploring 202. First things first. We explained to him that the key we'd found at the Koyama residence was not actually a key to 202. What? So we wasted our time for nothing? He looked completely crushed. Then Daigo kun continued. But we know for a fact that the key belongs to this complex. It does? Which apartment then? 201, actually. I chimed in. Uchiyama-san stared down at the key in my hand, then furrowed his brow and crossed his arms. So after all that, we can't get into 202? Actually, you'll find that's not necessarily the case. As I spoke, I led them into the building. I took care to climb the staircase quietly, since it was still fairly early in the morning. Then, I stopped in front of the door to my apartment, 201. We can get into 202 through here. Follow me. Yesterday, Daigo-kun was in charge. But today, it was my turn to lead. Are we finally going to enter the apartment? Let's go! Feeling slightly nervous, I quietly unlocked and opened the door. My apartment was still dark. As I hesitated, Daigo-kun stepped in ahead of me, followed by Uchiyama-san. I hurried after them. Daigo-kun cut across the main room to the balcony, then promptly opened the partition. This is our ticket to 202. Hmm, Ah, so I see. Is the sliding glass door unlocked though? Well, only one way to find out, I guess. Neither Uchiyama-san nor Daigo-kun looked terribly confident. But I had a strange feeling that it was, in fact, unlocked. Let's just go. Daigo-kun nodded. He was the first to crawl through the partition opening, followed by me, then Uchiyama-san. Once we reached 202's balcony, we could see just how empty the apartment looked inside. Empty and lifeless, like a void. 
But perhaps that was only natural, considering nobody lived there. Daigo kun checked the door handle, then looked up. Looks like we're good to go. I knew it. I didn't question how I knew. I just did. The sliding glass door slid open effortlessly. And then, at last, we set foot inside apartment 202. All right, we're actually going to end this here at chapter 29. This is the perfect cliffhanger. After all this time, we are finally, finally in apartment 202. We've gotten, we've been drip fed little bits of information. I have no idea what's going on, but I'm genuinely interested. I can't wait to get back to this. So come back next week. Let's find out what's happening in apartment 202. I'll see you guys then. See ya.